Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. We're gonna do a quick chat today on NAC, N-acetylcysteine and hair loss. Can NAC help improve my hair quality? We're gonna dive into this topic. I get this question a lot. What are some natural things I can do outside of the pharmaceutical approach to improve hair? This is one of them. We'll dive into that. Before we do, please smash that like button. It helps you get notifications of videos like this. And if they're live, you can also chime in and get your questions answered. Put your comments down below. Really appreciate it. Let's dive in. And if you guys join this content, feel free and share with friends or family. So N-acetylcysteine is an amino acid, essentially a, a precursor building block for glutathione as well. The big kind of um, tripeptide amino acids to make glutathione are cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. And so NAC has a lot of great benefits. There's some antiviral qualities to NAC. It can help as a mucus expectorant. It kind of breaks down mucus which is very helpful if you have lung or upper respiratory issues. There's some antiviral qualities to it. It's going to bump up glutathione. They use NAC in hospital for acetaminophen or Tylenol toxicity. If you go in, your kid overdoses or you overdose with Tylenol, they're going to give you NAC, typically in an IV form, to help bring back your liver. So there's a lot of great benefits of it. Even conventional medicine sees it and knows that, which is really cool. Now, NAC can actually help with hair loss. It does it via a couple of different means. So number one, NAC, because it's a building block to glutathione, it's a very powerful antioxidant precursor. And so there's a lot of theories in regards to hair loss that oxidative stress is part of why you're going to lose hair. You have like the DHT theory, that's dihydrotestosterone, and men have more testosterone, therefore that testosterone can go downstream to DHT. DHT is known to decrease blood flow and shrink and miniaturize that terminal thick hair to that villous kind of baby hair, thin it out, you're going to lose color, be more translucent and smaller. And so you can have this reactive oxygen species caused by the um, the lack of antioxidants that can cause hair loss. The DHT can cause that hair follicle to shrink. And so with NAC, because it's a powerful antioxidant, it's going to go down the pathway of making more glutathione and it's going to help with decreasing this hormone-like signaler called prostaglandin D2. We'll go over a couple of studies here right now real fast. Here's one study showing the NAC um, in, in using the treatment of early onset androgenic alopecia. This is like your male pattern baldness. Women can still have this too, but because guys have more testosterone than women, obviously they're going to have more DHT go downstream. And so NAC, this is one study. They had 100 people. This is actually a government study that was done in the last year or two, which is really cool that 100 people in the study, 18 to 30, and they had a couple of groups. They had like, I think a control group. They had a group with... Uh, minoxidil or Rogaine, and they had a group with NAC and then both, which is interesting. And they were looking at areas of the vertex and the frontotemporal, the sides here, and then right with the crown and the back of the head. So really interesting conclusion on the basis of findings of the current study, we can conclude that the role of trichoscopy, this is them looking at the hair follicles under a microscope while on the scalp in increasing the accuracy for diagnosing hair disorders as well to detect response or failure, the treatment NAC improves significantly most of the trichoscopic features of androgenic alopecia, and it was generally tolerable, and side effects encountered did not necessitate the stopping of treatment. This is great because NAC, guess what? It can help with OCD, right? It can help with trichotillomania, people like pulling their hair, picking at their skin, right? Doing like kind of finicky things like that and that involve an OCD component. It can help with a methylation. It can help with um, with your neurotransmitters, with dopamine and serotonin. So there's a lot of benefits of NAC. It can help with glutathione. So, I mean, you get exposed to toxins in the atmosphere, you're going to have extra glutathione to deal with that oxidative stress. So this is really cool because it's nice to have supplements that we can do that aren't going to have a ton of side effects and are going to have a lot of benefits. So this is really cool, especially when you can compare it. And then let's say you're a guy and you wanted to combine a little bit of an oxidative with the NAC, you may even have a, a better benefit. Now, this is looking at NAC when it comes to prostaglandins. This is interesting. So they're finding that in guys that are bald, they have the higher level of this prostaglandin D2. It's There's higher levels of it. And they're finding that NAC uh, is actually very helpful with it, which is really, really cool. So hair growth inhibition requires PG2 receptors. And they're talking about um, essentially follicle miniaturization happens when we have elevated levels of PGD2, which is really interesting. And then they talk about here, PGD2 also plays a role with the um, with the 5-alpha reductase and the DHT as well. DHT is the major hormone that does help shrink the hair follicle. And finasteride is the one that, that um, 
works on blocking that. Now, finasteride is is a good drug, but the problem is some people can be very sensitive to it in high levels. And so if you use it, you're much better off using it at 80% of the full dose, right? Knocking it down 80% and then trying to do topical in a liposomal formula so you don't get any of the systemic effects. Most problems with um, finasteride are because it's going systemic and you may already have a normal DHT systemically, but at the follicle, you're low. And so then you're lowering DHT systemically, which DHT plays major roles with allopregnenolone. It has effects on GABA and neurotransmitters, so they can really create brain fog and other issues. So that's a big one um, right there out of the gates. And I wanted to hit one more thing. I had one more study here. So I had NAC and PGD2. There was a study right here. There you go. This was it. I had it up here just a minute ago. We'll pull this one up. Okay, here we go. Pull up Science Direct. So this is interesting, right? Because they saw elevated levels of PGD2 have been shown to be present in ball scalp, right? Plays a critical role with the carotid. That's the protein of the hair, the keratinocytes. And part of the mechanism is you have this reactive oxygen species. This is like oxidative stress, right? Think of reactive oxygen species. This is what happens when you cut an apple or an avocado and you leave it out. It starts to oxidize, right? It generates lipid peroxides. So you also see peroxides with your scalp. Part of the reason why you have gray hair is you develop hydrogen peroxide at the follicle and hydrogen peroxide actually bleaches the hair. So when you see someone who has gray hair, the hydrogen peroxide is there and it's bleaching the hair from inside the follicle. And so the enzyme catalase, or you see creams like pseudocatalase can actually be helpful to neutralize that hydrogen peroxide. Guess where catalase comes from? It comes from glutathione. So right here, to determine whether these two linked events, we use reactogen, o reactive oxygen species scavenger NAC, which block the enhanced testosterone production from PGD2-treated keratinocytes. So what that means is the NAC decreased the actual um, DHT as well. And it also decreased the reactive oxygen species, which is really good. Thus, you propose that AGA, that's androgenic alopecia, patients may benefit from the use of NAC or other antioxidants. This is why I think you see things like uh, C60, which is a uh, it's a soccer ball like molecule, but that's considered a really good free radical scavenger. If you look at Jay Campbell's formula, hair loss formula, he uses the copper peptides and the C60. I think part of the benefit is that is that free radical C60 kind of works similar to NAC and it helps scavenger and decrease that free radical oxidative stress at the scalp level. And so they're talking about this um, right here. AGA patients may benefit from the use of NAC and other antioxidants as supplement to the currently available emerging AGA therapies such as minoxidil, finasteride, and PGD2 receptor blockers. So I think this is pretty cool. I mean, this makes a, a big difference for me because when I'm working with patients, I want to be able to use supplements that have multiple benefits. So if I have someone that has detoxification problems, I can support NAC to help with their detoxification and toxicity, but also help improve their hair. So there's a lot of cool things. And some patients don't want to have the side effects of some of the hair loss meds. And this gives them a really good natural approach. So really important when it comes to hair loss, though, get your hormones looked at, get your DHT looked at. A DHT blocker may make sense. Make sure you're digesting your protein. Make sure you're getting collagen. Make sure you're getting zinc and selenium. Make sure your thyroid is good. Make sure your cortisol is in check. All those play a major role. Again, I very rarely see someone improve their diet and not have benefits with their hair, skin, and nails. The building blocks play a big role. But if you're genetically sensitive to PGD2 or um, DHT, these are some nutrients that we can think about adding in to kind of help improve things. So again, Dr. J, I, 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 Dr. J here, I see lots of patients with hair issues. Women, men, they both have different causes to it. DHT tends to affect men more than women. Women, you may see more thyroid issues. You may see more low hormone issues, progesterone and estrogen. You may see chronic anemia, low iron. There's different causes, but you got to be holistic so you can look at all of them and then make the right recommendation. So Dr. Dick here signing off. Feel free and link down below if you want to reach out, get my coordinates where you can reach out if you want to dial in more specifically and get to the root cause at a functional medicine level. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day. Bye now.